To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. Friends, today we'll understand the topic of underwriting of shares and debentures. So this has two parts in it. One is underwriting, second is shares and debentures. So the concepts of shares and debentures you would have already learned at your foundation level. Let us understand what underwriting means. So what is this underwriting all about? Let me give you a small example. Say you want to buy a mobile phone after 6 months and the mobile phone costs you 12,000 rupees for which you plan to save 2,000 every month. Standing today, are you 100% sure that you will be able to save 12,000 at the end of 6 months? Maybe yes, maybe no. If you are unable to save 12,000 by the end of 6 months, you will not be able to buy your mobile phone. You go to your father and you tell him your plan that you want to buy your mobile phone but there is a chance that you may not have sufficient money at the end of 6 months. Your dad says, okay, you don't worry, you save how much ever you can save, I will give you the balance amount. Means, if your savings are short by some amount, your father will pay the balance amount. Here, your father is playing the role of an underwriter. He is giving you a guarantee that, let's say if your saving is at 10,000 rupees, 2,000 rupees will be paid by your father. In other words, your father is giving an undertaking to you that, if the money saved by you is short by whatever amount it is, he will pay the balance. He is playing the role of an underwriter. He is underwriting the risk of shortfall. So how does this concept of underwriting work in real life? Let us take an example of a company. Say we have a company called A Limited which has one cement plant currently. The management wants to start one more plant to expand its business. And the company did a rough estimate and it found out that they would require 10 crores of investment to start the second plant. Now, where will that 10 crores come from? They checked the balance sheet and they found that they have only about 50 lakh rupees, so which would not be any way sufficient. So the company decided, let us issue shares to the public and collect money from the public. So we have this company A Limited and now it wants to issue shares to the general public so that this company can collect money and start its business. For our example sake, let us assume that the face value of the shares which the company would issue is 10 rupees and the issue price is also 10 rupees. There is no premium, no discount. So how many shares will the company issue? It wants to raise 10 crores. 10 crores divided by 10 rupees, 1 crore shares it will issue to this general public. So this public have now 1 crore shares to apply for. At the end of the issue, will the company get application for 1 crore shares? Maybe yes, maybe no. There are three scenarios possible. The first scenario, this public applies for exactly 1 crore shares, which means the company wanted 1 crore, the public applied for 1 crore. This is very rare in real life scenario, but for our example's sake, let us assume the company got exactly 1 crore shares. Is there any problem now? No. The company will allot 1 crore shares to the public. It has already collected 10 crore rupees with which it can start its plant. The second scenario, this public likes this company so much that instead of applying for 1 crore shares, they made an application for 5 crore shares. Whenever a company gets more shares than what it has issued, it is called oversubscription. In this case, the issue got oversubscribed 5 times. Friends, don't be surprised that the issue got oversubscribed 5 times. There are companies which got subscription for over 100 times. So whenever a company's issue is oversubscribed, it builds a very good brand image in the general public and amongst the shareholders, which means it's a very good sign for the company. The public has a lot of faith in the company. Now let's look at the third scenario which is possible. This public, instead of applying for 1 crore shares, they made an application only for 95 lakh shares. This shortfall or getting less number of shares than issued is called under subscription. When this company got only 95 lakh shares, how much amount did it collect? 95 lakhs into 10, 9.5 crores. How much did it want? It wanted 10 crores. So this 50 lakhs is now shortfall. There is a shortfall of 50 lakh rupees. Whenever there is an undersubscription, there are some problems. The first problem, we wanted 10 crores, we got only 9.5 crores, which means we don't have sufficient money to start our plant. The second problem, the brand image of the company in the general public is not very good. The third problem, friends, issue of shares to a public is not a simple process. There is a lot of cost involved just in the issue process. 
the company has to get its account audited, it has to file prospectus, it has to print application, it has to appoint bankers, it has to do a due diligence, many things have to be done. And these companies, when they issue shares to the public, they incur somewhere between 8 to 10 percent as issue cost. So our company, A Limited, would have easily incurred 80 lakhs to 1 crore rupees as issue cost. Now, now think about it friends. After spending this extra money of about 80 lakhs to 1 crore, the company is still not able to raise the entire money what it wanted. This could be another problem. Now let us look at another scenario. Instead of this public applying for 95 lakh shares, they made an application only for 85 lakh shares. In this case, there is a shortfall of 1.5 crores. Wait friends, it's not just about the shortfall. There is some regulatory authority called SEBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India which says that if a company in its public issue is unable to raise at least 90% of the issue, which means in our case, the issue size is 10 crores, 90% of 10 crores is 9 crores. If A limited is unable to get applications for 9, 9 crores from the public or if the public does not apply for at least 90 lakh shares, the company has to refund all the money collected back to the public. I am repeating this once again. If this company is unable to get application for 90 lakh shares, at least 90%, entire money has to be given back to this public. This becomes a larger problem. How much did we want? We wanted 10 crores. How much did we get? We got 0. On the top of it, we already spent some 1 crore rupees as issue expenses. So it can be a very risky position. So friends, when the company made an issue of shares to the public, there was a risk. What was the risk? The risk that the issue will be undersubscribed. One more thing friends, this 90% level what I told you that at least 90% should be received by the company, it is called minimum subscription. So there is always a risk that the company may not be able to raise the money what it wants. To cover this risk, the, this person called underwriter comes into the picture. Let me give you another example. Whenever you drive a vehicle or whenever you drive a two-wheeler, there is a risk that you will meet with an accident. And along with the risk, there is a risk of damage. What do you do to cover the damage? You pay some amount to an insurance company who will cover up that risk of damage. Similarly, this company when it issues shares to this public, company will approach someone called underwriter. Company will approach someone called underwriter. What will this underwriter do? The underwriter will give an undertaking to this company that if the public does not apply to the shares or if there is any shortfall in the application received by the company, the balance shares will be taken by this underwriter. In our example, the total issue of shares was the company had issued 1 crore shares out of which the public applied for 85 lakh shares. What is the shortfall? 15 lakhs. This 15 lakhs of shortfall will be taken by this underwriter underwriter is covering the risk for under subscription. So friends, who are these underwriters? The underwriters can be individuals, they can be partnership firms, they can be company. But generally in real life, these are banks and financial institutions because in real life issue size will not be 10 crores, it will be thousands and thousands of crores. So if some, if some company is issuing shares worth 40,000 crores, one individual will not be able to underwrite it. At times, because the issue size is very large, you will have more than one underwriter that is called joint underwriting or multiple underwriters. We will cover those when we discuss some problems. Friends, like you pay insurance premium to cover your insurance, uh, to cover the risk of damage, this company will have to pay something to this underwriter. The payment which the company makes to the underwriter for underwriting the issue of shares is called underwriting commission. Now, how much commission can the company pay? Can the company sell pay 10%, 20% of the issue? No, there is a limit on it. If it is an issue of shares, the company can pay 5%. If it is an issue of debentures, the company can pay maximum 2.5%. This 5% and 2.5% is the maximum amount of commission which a company can pay to an underwriter. But what will be the actual amount of commission paid? The actual amount of commission will be the percentage specified in the articles of association. So if the articles of association say that only 1% is to be paid as underwriting commission, the company can pay only 1%. But 5% of what or 2.5% of what, whatever is the issue size. So in our case, the issue size is 10 crores. 
and if the underwriter has underwritten the entire issue, the underwriter has underwritten the entire issue, 5 percent of 10 crores will be the maximum amount of underwriting commission. So, we can have one underwriter or more than one underwriter. Let us look at some examples to understand what happens if there is a single underwriter, what happens if there are joint underwriters, what happens if the issue is underwritten fully, what happens if the issue is underwritten partly and all those concepts. Take the example of a company which has issued 10,000 shares to the general public and this company appointed an underwriter who has underwritten entire 10,000 shares. Now, if the public makes an application for 6,000 shares, the balance 4,000, 10,000 minus 6,000, the balance 4,000 will be subscribed by this underwriter. We call it as an underwriter's liability. If the company gets application for 8,000 from the public, this underwriter will subscribe to 2,000 shares. I hope this point is very clear. If the company gets 10,000 or more application from the public, the underwriter will not subscribe to any shares. Continuing with the same example, let us say the underwriting contract was only for 6,000 shares. So, instead of the underwriter underwriting the entire shares, the underwriter has underwritten only 6,000 shares. Now, if the public has applied for 6,000 shares, is it that the underwriter does not have any liability? Well, we cannot conclude it so easily. For this, we need to understand the concept of marked applications. Whenever a company makes an issue of shares to the public, say A Limited is making the issue, it will print something called share application form and this underwriter, let us say X, underwriter has given an undertaking for how many shares? 6000 shares. So, this underwriter will also make efforts to distribute these application forms to the public and what will the underwriter do when it distributes the forms to the public? It will put a mark on the application that I have distributed this application. Maybe it can be some code number, it can be the name of the underwriter, whatever it is. But there will be some marking on the application, whatever this X is distributing to the general public. So that when the public subscribes to those shares, X Limited and the company can sit and decide how many shares has the company received, how many applications has the company received on account of X. We call this as marked applications. So, whenever there is a partial underwriting, so out of 10,000, X has underwritten only 6,000 shares. You have to count the marked application. If this company has received more than 6,000 marked application, there is no liability on part of X. Friends, we understood the concept of marked application. Now, let us understand how this marked application works in case of underwriting of shares. One thing, if there is a single underwriter and if the entire issue is underwritten, there is no need of using marked applications or unmarked application. It is relevant only if it is either a partial underwriting or there is a joint underwriting. Let us take the example of our company A Limited which has issued 10,000 shares. Out of these 10,000 shares, X has underwritten 6,000 shares. Out of this 10,000 shares, X has underwritten 6,000 shares. At the end of the issue, the company got applications for 11,000 shares. So, we issued 10,000, the public liked our company and the public has given applications for 11,000 shares. Out of these 11,000, 5,000 were marked application and the balance 6,000 were unmarked application. What was X commitment? X commitment was for 6,000 shares. How much did we get as marked application? 5,000 shares. Can we tell that X has a further liability of 1,000 shares? No, because the issue is already oversubscribed. So, there is no further liability on the part of X. But how do we logically look at this issue? The total issue made by us was for 10,000 shares, out of which we got 6,000 shares as marked application. What is the shortfall? The shortfall is for 10,000 minus 6,000, 4,000 is the shortfall. Out of this 4,000 balance, how much did we get as marked application from X? We got a total of 5,000 shares as marked application from X. We needed 4,000, we got 5,000. So, there is no shortfall in this case. Hence, X does not have any further liability in this case when the issue has been oversubscribed.
Let us make some changes to the examples we discussed earlier and understand this concept a bit more in detail. The company has issued 10,000 shares out of which 6,000 have been underwritten by X. The public subscribed for 9,000 shares in total out of which 4,000 were marked application and 5,000 were unmarked application which means the application which, which had the marking of X, the underwriter are 4,000 and the balance shares are unmarked application. Now, can we say that since X had agreed to underwrite 6,000 shares and we have received only 4,000 marked application, the liability of X is 2,000? No, it is too quick to conclude that because if X will add further 2,000 shares, we will have a total of 11,000 shares. Then how do we tackle with this issue? The out of the 10,000 shares which were issued to the public, how, what is the number of unmarked application? Unmarked application is 5,000. If I remove 5,000 from 10,000, the gross liability of X, the gross liability of X will become 5,000. How much has X underwritten? 6,000. So X must ensure that these 5,000 shares are filled up. How many marked application we got? We got a total of marked application 4000. 5000 minus 4000, 1000 is the net liability of X. So, X has to subscribe for 1000 shares in this case. Now, how does the math work? Out of 10,000 shares, 4000 is marked application plus 5000 unmarked application plus 1000 of liability of X. So, total becomes 10,000. 10,000, 10,000 it matches. Friends, let us do a small change to the problem we discussed earlier and see how it can be applied in this case. The company has made an issue for 10,000 shares. This is the total issue size. Out of this 10,000 shares, X has underwritten 6,000 shares. X has underwritten 6,000 shares. After the issue is completed, the company realized that it has got applications for application received for 9,000 shares. Out of these 9,000 shares, 7,000 was marked and 2,000 is unmarked. 7,000 is marked and 2,000 is unmarked. Now, there is a shortfall of 1000 shares. Will X be liable to take that 1000 shares? Look at it. No, because X had committed only for 6000 shares and the marked application which the company has received is already 7000 shares, which means X gave 1000 more shares than what it had committed. So, X will not have any further liability in this case. How do we look at it from logically? Total issue size is 10,000, unmarked application is 2,000, so the shortfall becomes 8,000. Now we understood that because X has given a commitment only for 6,000 shares, it is not responsible to subscribe for the additional 2,000 shares because it committed 6,000, it gave 7,000. So there is no further liability on account of X. Friends. Our company A Limited had issued 1 crore shares to the public. Now, say for example, the employees, the directors and all those people who are related, who are internal to the company, they approached the management and said, out of these 1 crore shares, we are willing to take 1 lakh shares. Out of 1 crore shares, we, they are willing to take 1 lakh shares. Now, if 1 lakh shares are being issued to employees and directors, how many shares will be issued to public? The public, the company will issue only 99 lakh shares to the public. In such a case, the guidelines are very clear that the underwriting commission should be paid only on this 99 lakh shares which has been issued to public. The commission, the portion which is, issue, which is not issued to the public, on such portion, underwriting commission is not payable.